Ducks fans, are you ready? You are listening to the Ducks and Pucks podcast. This is the number one home for Anaheim Ducks talk and analysis. Here we go. Welcome to the show. This is your host, Mike Waltz, along my co-host, Eddie Richard. And we have a special guest today. We have Hannah Spraker from the fourth period. Thanks for joining us, Hannah. Thanks for having me. And we have two big topics to talk about on the show this week. Uh, one is John Gibson, and the other is Ryan Kessler. So we're going to go to both those. Um, we have a little bit of uh, some updates, smaller things here and there to talk about. But those are the two big players, basically, that came up in the news uh, recently. I guess we can kind of start with the uh, the Kessler one. It was kind of interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll read you guys the tweet, and we can kind of go into it. But on August 5th, Ryan Kessler uh, tagged Ryan Johansson and put, uh, How's summer training going? Want to meet me in the streets before we get going on the ice? And uh, basically that spun into a big craziness. Um, Hannah, what, what did you think? I mean, it kind of came out of the blue. And then, of course, the fan bases went at it, and everybody went at it. It kind of just went nuts on social media that day. I mean, from a PR standpoint, I think it was brilliant. Because if that's, I mean, if he's looking to cause a rocket, like, he's done it. But it was, yeah, it was random. It was totally out of the blue. Like, he, I think he hasn't tweeted anything since, like, February. So, oh, one has to wonder what he was doing and thinking and anything when he was tweeting this. But it's just weird for me because it's like, okay, last season you clearly weren't up to speed after the whole injury. I mean, who can blame him? He's, what, 33? Like, going to be 34? Or is he 34 yet? He's 33, right? Yep. So, like, all right, you're 33, came off hip injury that was pretty gnarly, and you're tweeting a 26-year-old to fight? Like, I don't (laughs) really know what he's thinking is going to happen or like, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be entertaining come the season, but it's just random. Like why? Yeah. That's how I felt. What did you think, Eddie? What was your first impression when that tweet went out and then everything went all crazy? Well, it's August. So I was happy to actually get something with hockey going on because hockey or August is kind of dry, but it was real random. And I had to double check to make sure it was actually his account. And I was waiting for the, Oh, I'm sorry, guys. My account was hacked. Tweet, <laughs> but um, it was kind of hilarious. And then watching the the fan bases just just blow up and go back and forth. And it, it happened for about two or three days. They hit point on. Then you had, you know, random teams fan bases jump in. Like, all right, well, this really has nothing to do with you. It's between like Nashville and the Ducks going on right now. <laughs> so uh, I mean, it was pretty hilarious. It was funny. But I, I agree with you, Hannah. Maybe there's some something that they're planning together and as a PR thing. To get everyone engaged, I mean, it, it you know, it's kind of foreshadows like something that can happen in the future. Either like with EA Sports, they're going to go head to head playing a game or something like that, or they're going to promote something together. Um, it, I don't know, or maybe he was just having you know one of those good nights with his friends and thought it was a good idea to tweet something out like some of us have done before in the past by tweeting or messaging an ex boyfriend or girlfriend. <laughs> we have one too many, so <laughs> regardless, it was hilarious, and I'm glad that he provided some entertainment for for August so far. Yeah, absolutely, and, and like you said, maybe it was some drunken tweets or something like that. You know, uh, I, I'm not going to say I haven't been there before. You know, you got to kind of be careful with what you're, you know, when you're drinking, and you're like, oh, let's tweet this out. This sounds good, and then, of course, you start getting replies and retweets, and you're going, oh, wait a second, maybe I shouldn't have said that, but but I, I don't know, Eddie. I, the, day, the day after yeah. Realizing you're so for what you said. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and this one is kind of weird because I, I think, Eddie, it, you know, you're talking about, hey, maybe they're planning something together. Well, you know, Ryan Johansson does tweet back. He doesn't tag Kessler in the tweet, but he, you know, a little, uh, I think it's an hour or two afterwards, he tweets, you know, quote, I'll pay for your parking quote. So I don't know. I mean, what do you think, Hannah? You think maybe there is something planned? Because, I mean, he does rebuttal back. It's kind of a, a weak you know, lame response, but uh, maybe they do have something going on. Maybe if hockey doesn't work out, the WWE might work out. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) It's so random, but I feel like there might be something behind it, but that could just be 
optimistic thinking. Um, yeah, I like it. I don't know. With Ryan Kessler, like you can never really count him out to do something like random. Like he just kind of pulls things out of a hat. Like maybe he's practicing a Superman punch. Maybe he wants to take that on. I don't know, but it just it seems random. But I feel like there might be something behind it. Like. And these guys, like, I mean, you've seen, like, the mic'd up videos, like, when they're fight, they, it's all for the fans, the fighting, but then, like, they're like, oh, good fight, man, whatever, but, and then there's a locker room, like, I see them, you know, in the hallways, like, shaking hands and whatnot, I mean, Kessler's a bit more of a hothead when it comes to that kind of stuff, but, I don't know, like, I feel like, yeah, there could be something behind it, I think you could be onto something there. Yeah, I think Eddie, you could be on something there, and some a little uh, you know tidbit that I had uh, heard recently too is that Kessler had gone and talked to one doctor, and that doctor was saying you know you can't play this season, you're gonna have to sit out. And then I heard from another uh, same source close to the team that he went to a second doctor, got another opinion like most players do, and then the second opinion said no, you can play. So I don't know if maybe he got that second opinion. And he's like, hey, let me just blow it up on on social media now because, hey, I'm going to come and play next year. So let's just fire everybody up. Like Eddie said, it's the middle of August. There's no hockey. It's a fun season, too, though. Right. But he said, like, oh, I feel better skating now than I did five years ago. And it's like, okay, well, you don't look like it. So what's going on? Right, exactly. I mean, and we, you know, going back to uh, Elliot Freeman's original, you know, article. That's when he said, "Oh yeah, it looks like he's going to be gone for a year." And we had a couple shows where Eddie and I talked about it. Uh, you know, whether or not Kessler was going to play. You know, was he going to sit out for the whole year? Um, we also heard that maybe he would need another surgery somewhere down the road. So I still don't know if this signals that he's going to play or not. Because as soon as this happened, a lot of people blew me up and were like, "Hey." Is he playing next season? So I started asking around to some of my, you know, sources and stuff. And they're like, well, he got the green light from one of two doctors. So I'm like, okay. Um, but I agree with you, Hannah. I mean, what happened last season did the same thing. So I think my fear is, I, of course, I like all this, you know, uh, tweets and all the stuff that he does and all his little, you know, uh, snarkiness and whatever. But my question is, is it, you know, is it going to be too soon for him? Yeah, I mean, that's no minor injury, and at 33, the body's not as forgiving. So, I mean, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I mean, I feel like he's definitely the type of person who, if he is physically able to skate, he will. So, like, I could, I mean, there was a lot of talk about like all the rehab he was doing during the season last year um even after he said like you know feels better skating than five years ago and he was still struggling quite a bit and he was in a lot of pain. so i mean it'll be interesting to see what the like confirmed green light is to see if he actually is you know cleared like legitimate and if he and if it shows like if he looks like the good old Ryan Kessler that Ducks fans know and love, then great. But, I mean, I'm skeptical because you're not the same player after an injury like that. No, and I, I'm in the same boat as you. What, what do you think, Eddie? Uh, I mean, you know, I, I think Hannah, I agree with her too, and you probably agree on the, the sentiment that he's going to want to play if, if, you know, he gets one opinion that says he's good to go. But are you, you know, kind of worried too or concerned that, hey, he's going to go out there again? I mean, you play hockey. You, you've you seen other players with hit injuries up close. I mean, what is your take, uh, you know, if you should you know, sit out or try and play again? I'm going to start off by quoting. Uh, I talked to uh, Bob Beers. He's one of the commentators for the Boston Bruins. I talked to him when I was in Colorado, a Q&A with him. And I asked him a question about hockey players and injuries, and his, his response to me was, hockey players think they're invincible and think they can do it all. So if you tell a hockey player they can't do it, or you know, if 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 you know that one incident, I forgot the hockey player, his heart stopped beating, and then he wants to go out and play. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He said that no matter what, they're gonna want to, and I think Kessler is the kind of player, and you know, just like a lot of the hockey players, that regardless of of how he feels, if he feels able enough to skate, even if it's not a hundred percent, he's still gonna go out there. Um, I can tell you his age, and yeah, he's still young per se, the thirty three, thirty four ish. 
But, I mean, in hockey years, you got to add at least, like, five to that. I, same with the military. When I was in the Army, I mean, I tell people my age, but, I, you know, in reality, I'm adding, like, five or six years of that because all the wear and tear my body have to do. I think he's going to play, and, and him tweeting something like this seems like he's he really wants to play and he's going to. He might not be 100% to go because you can't really heal from an injury, especially at the age he's put on. But, um, I mean, yeah, I, I think we can see him opening night. Would it be recommended? I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Uh, from what I've been reading and talking to people about, he probably shouldn't. He should probably, you know, get that checked out more. And as far as, like, me playing hockey, uh, when I was 18, 19 years, years old, I could take a hit. I can block a block a puck. I have a bruise for one or two days. Now it's I'm playing goalie or, or blocking a shot, and I have a bruise for, like, a week or two. So, I mean, because <laughs> of the age, you got to – take that in consideration but but honestly him being a professional hockey player at the age he is how many more years does he actually have to be efficient before he is, you know starts being that that player that just wants to sign on every team whoever can you know take him on for a million or, or less than that so i think he wants to milk every last bit of hockey he has when he's able to play at the level that you know a top six level and not just that that fourth line player that you know you're scratch every other game kind of player yeah, you know, and he's still got, obviously, uh, you know, four more seasons left on his contract. But you do bring up that top six question, which, uh, you know, the Ducks did have uh, the jersey reveal, that summer beach party I was there, and, and Murray did a Q&A. And I thought this was kind of interesting. He talked about the top six uh, and if Kessler wasn't going to be able to play. So uh, we know that they talked about Patrick Eves and him coming back. You've seen the videos of him working out and everything. So they were talking about this as being a top six. If Kessler was out, they were talking about Raquel, Getzloff, and Eves on the top line. And then the second line they were talking about was going to be Henrik, who you guys know is going to be with the Ducks for a while now. And then bumping Perry down and then moving Silverberg over to left wing. So if Kessler doesn't go, it's kind of an interesting situation. I mean, I I, I like that top six uh, in there, Hannah, but I, there's kind of a drop off after that. Yeah, I was talking about it to someone uh, the other day that was just commenting about, you know, now that I'm in Toronto, everyone's like, Tavares. Yeah. <laughs> and then they asked me about the Ducks. I'm like, ah, I don't know. But, yeah, the top six, if they can, like, if Eves is good to go, like, that top line, I love it. I think it's great. I think that Henry is probably better fit in that slot than Kessler. So, I like the top, but the bottom six kind of, like, I won't want to say garbage, but kind of. Big drop-off. <laughs> it's just, it, I mean, this team is very confusing when it comes to what they're doing half the time. So, I don't know what Bob Murray is thinking. <laughs> Yeah, no, and I, I, I agree with you. And I think, uh, Eddie, you, you agree, too, that we yeah. looked at this lineup. And even even if Kessler was in, say Kessler goes in there and he plays on the second line and Henrik's the third line or vice versa, uh, okay, you got three centers. Your fourth one's going to be whoever you're going to throw in there. We all know the fourth line is kind of whatever. Uh, Murray, did, Murray did talk about it, saying, hey, you know, teams have to have a better fourth line. They have to have a better uh, third uh, D pairing, which... Eddie and I talked about this the last show. I think you would agree, Hannah. The Ducks didn't really improve any of that. So no. they're in a tough spot. Yeah. That's If you look at any, you know, Stanley Cup team in the last, like, five years, they can roll four lines that can score and do damage. And, like, that's just something that the Ducks really haven't tackled. They haven't really done much to improve that kind of situation and put them in, you know, a legitimate cup contending spot i mean i and i think you know maybe the best chance of that was maybe two years ago maybe three years ago but now like looking at the age four and everything it's just it doesn't look like an ideal situation for i mean especially in today's you know hockey it it looks like a recipe for disaster from my point of view just because i mean Terry, first of all, like, let's be real, that's not looking good. Right. And then, you know, Patrick Eves is a question mark. Kessler is a question mark. Like, Getzoff is 
still an elite center. I think he will definitely be worth his contract still for another few seasons. But like, it's just it doesn't it doesn't look like it's going to improve anytime soon. So I think that like it's this. I feel like this coming season is just kind of one of those like question mark seasons of like okay, like we're not admitting that we're going to be in like rebuild, but we're still kind of holding on to hopes of like you know, the core for everything we've got. So, I mean, but yeah, they need to improve the the fourth line and they need to get that third pairing solid. And it's just something they haven't really tackled. Yeah. I mean, I agree hundred percent. You look at the bottom six, you're talking about, you know, Givens they have, they still have Kase and Richie. They need to sign, which they're talking about may not happen until closer to the season. Uh, Cognano may get bumped down to the bottom six as well. So, I mean, it's it's not looking too good. Uh, what do you think, Eddie, as far as, you know, the Ducks this season, you know, obviously the bottom six kind of being a big drop-off, especially if Kessler or Eves or both are not, you know, in part of the season or the whole season? Well, as a Ducks fan, I, you know, I, I don't care if I'm in the situation like the Senators are. I'm still going to come, you know, day one of the season, going to hope for a uh, Stanley Cup and, and – root for my team and have that op- optimistic view of we're going to win a Stanley Cup, you know, no matter how far off it might be. Um, but I, I totally agree with, with that. Our, our bottom six and, and our, our lower de- our defensemen haven't really improved. We just, I, I don't see, especially with, with defense. Yeah, we got bigger, but I mean, I thought we wanted to get faster. So I, I don't understand where that came from. Mm-hmm. Um I wanted to talk about, too, when you mentioned about Perry dropping the second line. I, I actually like Perry in the bottom six role and having mm-hmm. a younger player take that bottom or top six because that younger player always seems to click better in that top role. And something sparks in Perry when he's put in those bottom lines that starts getting him to produce. He starts crashing the net harder. He starts digging for those pucks. Um, yeah, it's not an ideal spot for someone that's making that much money, but if it gets him to produce... I mean, I'm all for it. Um, uh, I, I'm still confused what Bob, like Bob Murray's doing. Uh, I really, yeah, I just—it's a big question mark in my head. Like, like Riddler from the Batman. I have no idea <laughs> what he did this this upcoming season and how he thinks that we're gonna get better by adding just bigger players that are slower. Because I thought he wanted to get away from that, but I mean, only time can tell. Like maybe he has some magic, or maybe the scouts know something about the players that he got that we don't, and they're just gonna, you know, have that late blossom and be those players that we need, and everyone just chips in, and we just, I don't know, who knows? But as of right now, I don't really see it. But I'm still gonna hold my head high and be like, yeah, you know what? You know, come next June, the Ducks are gonna be Stanley Cup champions because that's my team, and that's what I have to think, and I want to think until I start seeing them and they they prove me wrong. Yeah, and then unfortunately, we like like we've been talking about, there's some question marks here. As, you know, some of the players, the lineups, the health, and whatnot. Uh, another issue, I guess, a way of maybe solving this, Hannah, that we kind of talked about on some other shows too, is what if you bring up some players? Uh, you know, they may have to rush them. I mean, what if you do uh, bring up Troy Terry or Sam Steele because Kessler's out? I mean, what do you think about that? Do you think that they shouldn't rush those guys, or if they're in a position where that's all that they can do, should they do it? I mean, what do you feel? Uh, I mean, I think camp will tell a lot, but I think that, I mean, like, those guys, like, those are going to be, you know, your guys in the next few years. So, like, definitely they need to get their sample size of NHL games one way or another. So whether that's this season bringing them up and, you know, giving them their shot, like, I feel like it's going to come down to when Bob Murray just kind of decides, like, all right, like, we need to kind of really retool and and look at what we've got and start seeing who our stars are going to be in the next few years instead of, you know, our aging core. And I like the whole idea of Perry on the bottom six, too. I agree with that. I think that um, he definitely does thrive there. I think, I mean, especially the kind of player that Corey Perry is, I think that he's been kind of beat up his entire career because nobody really likes him. So, <laughs> like, again, your body takes a toll getting just, you know, demolished night in and night out. So I think, like, that's definitely a better role for him at this point in 
his career. But yeah, I think the young guns are going to have to come up and kind of show what they've got. But, and I think that that can really kind of spark some hope in the fan base too. Because, I mean, yeah, they, there's, it, I feel like it's the fan base, it's just so like hot or cold right now. Whether it's the Gibson contract or the future of this franchise, people are either really stoked and like, oh yeah, yeah they're going to win a cup this year. Or they're just like, all right, cool, time to rebuild. So it's it's really going to come down to like where management sees this team go. So, I mean, the way that Bob's kind of tooling it, I don't see him really bringing up the young guys so soon. Um, cause he, I mean, it seems like he's still hope in the core and, and what they've got from the a reporting standpoint, I can only write the same stories so many times. <laughs> so many ways. This has been happening for the past three years. So I'm just hoping he does something different. <laughs> but it'd be cool to see the young guys come up. I'd like to see what they can do and, you know, how they slot in with the, with the team and see, like, kind of what we're looking at in terms of the future of this franchise. Yeah, and I, I agree. I mean, if if you have Kessler come back and they go back to uh, you know Cognato, Silverberg, and him, I could kind of see them doing that. Maybe put Perry on the third line, like Eddie talked about. Um, you know, if he doesn't come back, maybe they change some stuff up. Uh, you know, maybe you throw Casse up there with Henrique and Silverberg. You know, and mix it around a little bit, or maybe you know throw Perry in the mix too. However, so I, I mean, I kind of. I kind of I I want Kessler obviously to play, but I also kind of want there to be a shakeup in the lineup because I, I outside of that top line like we were talking about Raquel uh, Getzloff and Eves, I think the rest if you mix it up a little bit it might be good because you know like Eddie was talking about Perry did do well um, on that third line for the time he was playing last year so that's you know something that they can look at um, you know the other the other part of this puzzle of course uh, you brought it up was Gibson. Um, he just got married this last uh, week, and then he also gets this big contract, which you're talking about the fan base, and <laughs> uh, kind of goes all over the place on this. But uh, you know, if you didn't know, Gibson, you know, signed this massive uh, eight-year extension, uh, just over fifty-one million, uh, you know, six point four uh, average uh, salary each year, and a lot of the fans liked it. It was like eighty percent in our poll liked it, and twenty percent didn't. Um, Eddie, I'll go with you first. I mean, what what did you think about this? contract with Gibson because, uh, uh, you know, the money seems kind of in line with like the Helen Buck deal, but then, you know, the term is eight years. What do you think? Well, I'm probably going to shut off my uh, Twitter and Facebook after this, but <laughs> I, I, I'm not the biggest Gibson, uh, Gibson fan for personal reasons. And I, I, you know, everyone seems to think that he's going to get to this elite level. And I, by how it means, I really hope I'm wrong. And if he hits that level, yeah, I will admit I'm wrong 110 times a day if I have to, but I mean, I think the term's a little long. I mean, I mean, eight years is long, and I would have been settled at maybe a five-year, $5.5 million kind of contract. Um, I mean, last season he had career highs in, in wins and save percentage in games, but I mean, he hasn't really, like, he's been getting injured a lot, and the playoffs hasn't really, I mean, we we haven't really seen him, like, like, move us to that next level like Jagir did when we were in the playoffs. I mean, there was games where we shouldn't have won, but Jagir was standing on his head and, and helped us win. I mean, Jagir at that time deserved this kind of money in turn, but, I mean, the only thing I'm glad about is we didn't give him a full uh, no trade, no movement clause, so, you know, we're able to trade him. He could submit a 10-team list that he doesn't want to go to, I believe. Um, that's the only thing, but... I'm not too sold on Gibson yet. And like I said, I, I mean, he's wearing a Ducks jersey, so I'm going to cheer for him regardless. But I, I just I, – I don't see it right now. And I don't see why, you know, our GM decided to throw this much money at him but not try to spend this much money at free agency to, to get someone like, faster and better as far as our, like, forwards and defense. Yeah, and I, I agree with you. I think that's part of the concern. Uh, I think the the no trade, you know, the limited no trade uh, team clause that kicks in in 2021. So at least we're not stuck like we are with Perry right now. You know, they're saying, oh, they might be trying to trade him. He's got the no movement clause. So that's a big mess, as we talked about in shuffling him around on the line. So that part I do like that they, they didn't give him, a, you know, a full uh, no movement clause. Because then, you know, something 
we would have been stuck later on. That that's my fears later in, in this contract. I think he's going to play well the next couple of years, but like you talked about in the playoffs, that was the article I wrote too. I mean, he's 11 and 13 in the playoffs. His save percentage is 9.12. You know, it's respectable. His goals against eh, it's 2.8. So and 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 then he did. Of course, he got swept in this last you know series, but of course the team on a whole played you know crappy for lack of a better word. That's just I mean they just got smoked by the Sharks. That's all you can say. But um, what do you think, Hannah? I know we had you on the show before. We talked about this, and and before all this happened, and and now here it is. They they signed that deal. You know, Anderson's long gone. There's I still got people hitting me up about Anderson after all this, and, and I'm like, let it go, let it go, people. But what <laughs> what say you about uh, you know this contract and Gibson, the future of the team? I don't like it. I don't like the deal. I I mean I like like yeah he's clearly the guy like the whole Anderson Gibson thing, like they made it clear Gibson's their guy, which is fine. But that is a long time. Eight years is a very long time. And I, I like I agree, yeah, I would have liked to see like a five year, like five point five kind of deal. Like I think the money's a bit much for what he's proven. Again, like he's been hyped up for so long that I think people don't really look at his career as a whole, like everyone likes to focus in on the regular season. Like, oh my gosh, he's the best thing since sliced bread and the best save percentage, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, cool. But when you talk to an NHL player and they look back on their career, are they going to give a crap about their regular season staff if they don't have a cup? No. Because, like, wh- why are they playing that? You know? So, like, it's, it's it's frustrating because not only is he injury prone, that I know people would love to tweet me when they hear this, saying he's not, and then, oh, you he played 60 games. I don't care. Don't tweet me. <laughs> like, his playoff performance is lackluster. Like, it's not worth that kind of money and that kind of term, what he's proven. Because he hasn't really done much in the play. Like, and the thing is, he gets overworked at the end of the season, and then he gets hurt. And it's always right before the playoffs, and it's always questionable if he's going to be there, or in the playoffs, he gets overworked. Or, you know, it's just, there's a lot of, like, he's made leaps and bounds in his game in the past two seasons, I would say. Like, he's letting in way less soft goals. He's having to rely on his athleticism a bit less. Now that he's a bit more technically sound, but he just he, he gets overworked, he gets hurt, and it's like, everyone was you know, saying, arguing with me saying, I don't know what I'm talking about, whatever <laughs> he played the X amount of games, whatever there was an article that came out on NHL.com yesterday and Gibson was saying and I quote, last year it seemed like it was one injury that was lingering a bit, never fully got better, like, okay the, he's admitting it himself, like he's injury prone. So, that, when you have that kind of record of injury, why are you throwing eight years at? That's what I don't understand more than anything. And it's I don't, I don't dislike Gibson. Like everyone thinks I just hate the guy. No, I'm just real in terms of what he's proven versus the hype that he gets. Because it, I, people. Some fans, like, come for me like uh, I just, you know, insulted their mother. It's crazy. So, I don't know. It's just, it's a lot, it's a long time to have someone who's injury prone. Like, I was joking with someone, I was like, he's going to have two hip replacements by the end of that contract. Like, yeah. <laughs> like you got to take into, you know, consideration his injury history. Like, it's, I don't know. It's frustrating from that standpoint of like, okay, why? Like, I get he's your guy. I get, you know, you think he can win a cup with him. But, but why eight years? That's a long time for any goaltender. Like, goaltenders don't have that long of a shelf life. Yeah, I agree. I think that's the issue. What did you, you were going to chime in, Eddie? Yeah, um, I think she hit it on the mark for me. And I think a lot of fans just hit hyped up because that's all I've been getting from day one about Gibson, the hype up. 
and I'm waiting for that end result, but I haven't really seen it yet. And just, just, just to go off what uh, Hannah was saying, and I I think this is the best way to describe the situation besides, like, between fans and the goalie debate in Anaheim. It's the same thing like talking religion or politics at a bar talk. <laughs> it's never going to end well because, you know, side this side has their own thing. This side has their, you oh, know, yeah. their own thing. I can't say side A or B because that's going to start another debate. Like, oh, which goalie is A, which goalie is B? But <laughs> – the biggest point you hit on me, and I think a lot of fans agree, would probably agree, is we've been getting so hyped up about it, but we haven't really seen that, you know, that end result. Like it's just, we're just still climbing that mountain, ready to see the mountaintop, but we still haven't exactly. seen it. Exactly, and it, it goes back to what you said of like, I would love to be proved wrong. Like, if I will like write a formal letter of apology for my skepticism if they win a Stanley Cup with John Gibson in the next few years. Like, but I just haven't seen that kind of caliber performance out of him. Like, and for him to get, be getting that much money when he hasn't made a Stanley Cup final appearance, I'm just, it's, it seems a bit reckless to me, is the best way I can put it. Yep, I totally agree. Do you think some of that Hannah is payback uh, for his, you know, taking the $2 million deal for the couple seasons before? Because I saw some people commenting on that. I think even Eric Stevens said, oh, well, he, you know, he took the $2 million deal for a couple years. Do you think that that was kind of like a reimbursement? Um, this contract? I could see it. And from what I've seen in the locker room and seen and heard from Carlisle is like, he's had kind of a chip on his shoulder and he's like, he Carlisle said it last season. He was like, you know, he's had an attitude problem. Like he, I think he's kind of, and I can't like say this is a for sure thing or anything, but like the vibe that, you know, in the locker room from Carlisle, is that he had a chip on his shoulder. He thought he was, you know, you know, his hype. He thought he was what his hype is. And, and that just, again, from like a coach's standpoint, from, you know, anyone who looks at it objectively, like he just hasn't met it. So like, why is everyone all, you know, up in arms about it? So, I mean, I think that could be part of it, but, um, I think it's more so like I don't know. I think Bob Murray is making a statement for sure that like they have full faith in him because he has has been a topic of discussion for a few years because of his injury history, but with good reason. Um, but also I think it, it does. I will say this: I think it does create a good atmosphere in the locker room to have their goaltender locked up for that amount of time and to have that kind of camaraderie. Like you saw so many of the guys um, Instagrammed or tweeted like how stoked they were to have him locked down for eight years. So I think it does create um, a good locker room situation. And that, I mean, it definitely does help when the guys believe in their goalie. So, I mean, there's the plus on that side, but yeah, I, I still think, I mean, it could that he ate the um, the two million. So yeah, I yeah. I, mean, I I've kind of just given up with trying to figure out what Bob Murray's doing. <laughs> And I think that's true. I mean, that's what a lot of people ask, like, what the heck is he doing, you know? Um, Eddie, you know, you play goalie. What do you, what do you think about this, you know, getting overworked like Hannah's talking about? You think uh, that they should maybe lean on uh, Miller a little bit more this season? And then obviously going forward, whoever the backup is, you know, after him, um, you think that is something that the Ducks need to look at as a strategy? Because, you know, he does get kind of worn out towards the end of the season. He gets hurt, and then, you know, like we said, in the playoffs, his playoff numbers are nowhere near what his regular season numbers are. So do you think that's maybe a good strategy, or what, or what do you think the Ducks should do in terms of trying to avoid, it? you know, that overworking uh, of him during the regular season? I mean, it goes back to, you know, hockey players think they're invincible. Um, I, I, I just play beer league. I don't have a backup, but if I did, I would not want someone taking my place between the pipes. I had to sit out. Uh, I sat out last week. Just I, I needed a break uh, from hockey and everything, just to relax before finals. So I sat out, and I had my buddy take over in net, and he actually got the win, which was cool. I congratulated him. I posted on on Facebook, you know, congratulations. But I said, you know, you know, now get the. And I just used the letter F. 
Those aren't my nets. You know, there's what hundreds of guys that use them. Before, you know, before I do, but I mean, that's my it's my net. I think if, you know, you can't really tell them, like, oh, you know, we're going to play Miller half the time. We're going to do this. I mean, it might have a psychological factor for him. He might get discouraged because as as goaltenders, you know, from the, the street goaltender to the beer league to the professional, we're weird to jump in front of a puck and stuff. So, um, yeah. I mean, he might be overworked or it could be he's not doing the right conditioning or something like that. Or I, I don't know, maybe he's just he's working that much hard and he gets hurt. But I, I don't think he's the type of player as a goaltender that's going to want to limit himself. And he's always going to say, yeah, I'm ready to go. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Or, or try to get to that next level to, to want to go. Um, maybe some more competition. Like, hey, we're going to start Miller in that more. Might fire him up. for like, no, no, you're not going to start him. I'm going to show you why I should be in that. And, I mean, maybe that can work. I mean, I don't. Back in the day, I didn't like Carlisle's approach when he was putting a, it was Hiller and Jagir. Like whoever wins the game stays in, whoever loses yeah. goes out. So that, annoying. That was terrible. Red bubble, yeah. Yeah, it's no, no. It's just you just stick. You know, obviously he knows he's number one. He got the contract. I, I you know, I, I hope the the whole wedding curse doesn't rain down on him. You know. Oh yeah. No, I was just... Yeah. So I really hope that, uh, you know, hearing his comments on uh, the Orange County Register, how he thinks that, it's, you know, he can bring a, or they can bring a cup to Anaheim and how their core still, you know, can get that. I hope he steps up maturity wise and, and player wise and, and, and is that factor for us. I mean, he played well when we were all injured. You know, h- half the team was injured at the start of the season. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? Um, I don't know. I, I, I really, I'm, I'm, I'm shooting for him, and I really hope that, like you said, Hannah, I hope he proves both of us wrong, so we can just, you know, we can just start apologizing every single day if we have to on Twitter or whatever. But I really hope he proves us wrong and it hits that level where we're gonna look back on this saying, "Wow, he only gets, uh, you know, what 6.4 million a year? No, no, he's better than, you know, so and so who gets this or so and so who gets that." Like. We don't want to look back as like, oh man, this is like Rick DiPietro, like 2.0 or something. <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> I mean. Well, and I, I think that like, I mean, he even said in his post, he was saying that he feels the pressure to step up and prove himself after the whole, whole Gibson and so they, you know, they showed that he wants to show that they chose the right. So I think it puts even that much more pressure on him to, to you know, stay in the game as long as he can or you know but you know the fact of the matter is what last season he was out for eight games and he didn't finish six games so it's just it just seems to be a pattern that has not changed for as long as we've been talking about John Gibson you know, the, that's true. And the other issue I, I look at, too, is the defense. You look at the Ducks, and, I mean, you, you have a great top four. You know, you have Fowler, Lindholm, Manson, and Montour. But then after that, it's the drop-off. So now talk about overworking like you talked about, Hannah. I mean, the Ducks might be overworking those guys on defense, too, yeah. to help play in front of Gibson. So that's another problem that I see, um, you know, because, I mean, they go out and get Shin. Okay, you bring Holzer back. whoop you do You know, you don't, you don't – I mean, there's a big drop-off. There's a big drop off. I mean, don't get me don't get me wrong. Those guys aren't bad defensemen, but I'm just saying they're 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 not solid guys that are you know you're gonna lean on in big situations. So you got four guys you're gonna have to try to lean on. Uh, just like we talked about, you you have the Ducks have a decent you know top six, maybe top nine, but the you know big drop off on the fourth line, and then it's it seems the same in the defense. You have one and two pairings are great. The third one there's a drop off. And how's that going to affect the team? So now you're going to put a lot of pressure on Gibson. You're going to put a lot of pressure on the four uh, top D-men. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it makes me a little bit nervous. They were injured. God knows how long. And, like, they're going to overwork some guys because, I don't know. It's just, it does, for me, the next few seasons are not looking good for this franchise. But, again, I'd like to be proven wrong. But from... On paper, like last season, I said it before the season started. On paper, that team has what it takes to win a Stanley Cup. This season, I am saying complete because 
it's just on paper it's not even adding up right now like the bottom six doesn't even make sense right now and then you know the third pairing all right like let's just throw some guys in there see if it works but i i don't know it's but actually like with how competitive the league is compared to just it doesn't it doesn't seem like the big bad ducks that have you know made it to the playoffs for god knows how long you know what do you think, Eddie, as far as the fourth line and you know overworking the D defense and whatnot of the top two pairings? I think when when Hannah talks about how you know this season, upcoming up season, you know like one plus one, you know is not going to equal you know two right now. I think this might be good for the Ducks as far as pressure wise. I mean, they're going to a they're going into a season. I'm pretty sure these players and management, you know, they all have social media. They all know what people are saying. They know what, you know, uh, what publications are put out through them. They know what the media is talking about. Um, I, I don't know if they listen to this podcast, but I'm, you know, if I if I were a player, I'd be listening to everything and seeing what the feedback is. I think this season, yeah, it's we don't have the highest hopes because on paper it doesn't look that good. But maybe that that pressure taken off of them is something good. Maybe you know. They don't have to go to in every single game knowing that oh we have to do this we have to do that they just have to go like every single game like oh we'll just take it one game like one game at a time like the whole cliche of hockey goes just take it one shift at a time maybe one game at a time works and maybe they shouldn't worry about like the Stanley Cup come game one they should just worry about winning that first game and going from there um, maybe this this mix up and this really weird bottom six and you know bottom you know bottom three defensemen. Maybe that might work out in their benefit. Maybe, you know, these bottom players that are, are bigger and beefier, maybe they'll block more shots for Gibson. You know, as a goaltender myself, I love when my defense is block shots. It's <laughs> awesome. Like, it's like, oh, cool. Like, I was going to go make the save, but, man, you got it before me. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, I mean, especially, I mean, there's some players out there that really can rip the puck, and you can have the pads on, and it still hurts. Like, I still get bruised in my chest and my neck. Uh, one of the guys that play hockey, used to play hockey with Nolan Thrasher. He had one of these wicked shots, so hard of a slap shot where, as a player, the ice like like as a skater, I go in front of the net, and I always moved away when he was like, gonna shoot. So I I didn't want to be part of that. And as a goalie, I wouldn't want to be part of that either. So maybe these bottom like Luke Shin and Sister, they're both big bodies, and maybe they may use their bodies, you know, to obviously hit, but maybe to block those shots too. And these bottom players maybe can kind of produce like the Vegas Golden Knights. Like these were like bottom players that no one really expected much of. Maybe they <laughs> might surprise people and, and put some numbers up or make some hits. Or we could have that, you know, Sammy Paulson kind of shut down third line that, you know, like hidden gems in these guys. I mean, I'm just being, you know, optimistic here. I, I know on paper it doesn't look that way when you look at it. But, I mean, it, it, it all depends on what happens on the ice next season and, and how these players perform. And, and how the camaraderie, if, if they're going to click and go from there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely like uh, Hannah talked about earlier, I mean, all the players came out and were happy about Gibson getting the contract. There's all the posts on Twitter and Instagram. So we know that there's that part of it, and that part's going fine. Uh, you know, I'm still concerned, uh, like we talked about before, about the uh, the third pairing and, you know, that fourth line. I, I think another question is, is, you know, do the Ducks make any trades? in the beginning of the season. Um, you know, one name that's come up I've seen Hannah has been Silverberg. This is his last year. Um, you know, do the do they try to work out a deal for him? Like uh, I know uh, Murray had talked about it at the uh, the beach party thing, but then or do you try and trade him and get somebody else? I mean, that's one name I've seen been floating around. I don't know if it happens, but what do you think? Do you think the Ducks maybe go that route? I mean, they're not going to do anything in free agency anymore. We all know that. But do you think that they try to pick up uh, somebody in a trade? Or, or do you just let this, this lineup roll, you know, and we just see how Eves and Kessler are come, you know, September? I would like to see a trade. But in ordinary fashion, I don't think we will see one. Or at least one of significance. Um, but, I mean, at this point, it's just kind of like you I feel like you've got to look down the line and see like okay what what do you want your team to look like after these massive contracts are off the books 
you know, once Perry is gone, once Getzloff's, you know, gone, or they resign him to like a one year contract. I don't know. But you need to start looking at how you're going to piece together a new core because that's eventually coming and it's going to come up way sooner than everyone thinks. I agree. You know, there might be. This, what if Kessler doesn't? What if he's done? What if, you know, he plays half the season and his body just can't take it so you really have to start piecing together the future of the team so I would like to see like a significant trade done by Bob Murray to start piecing together a future you know franchise player but I just don't think he's going to do it because he never really does and every year I was someone thinks like oh well he's got to do something but he does something that's so minor and everyone's just like, okay, well, what did that do? No, that's definitely been frustrating on our part. I think one of the ones I, I did hear, and it's just, you know, been rumored, but, uh, you know, Pacioretty from Montreal has been a name that's popped up. So, you know, and then, of course, as soon as that's popped up in some of the waves, then other people are like, okay, well, we're going to send Perry over there. And I'm like, well, time out. <laughs> how's, how's, yeah, how, how's that going to happen? I, exactly. I'm like, well, wait a sec, guys. What, 8.6 to play hockey in Orange County? Yeah, going anywhere. Exactly. His family, or, you know, his family and everything. He's not going to want to relocate. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's one that that's been thrown out there, and I just like both you guys. I'm like, eh, no, that's not going to happen. You know, uh, Silverberg maybe, but I think you're right. You you brought up a really good point, and as far as the core and how the Ducks are going to address building a new core, because I mean, yeah, you look at it. Perry's obviously fallen down as far as his production. We know we already know that we beat that horse. Uh, as you said, Getzloff's still been doing what he's doing, and he may end up, you know, in a situation where he does maybe a one or two year deal in a couple seasons or whatnot. And then, of course, Kessler, we don't know. Eves, we don't know. Even if Eves plays this year, we don't know if he's going to have another issue or not. So, I think that is. You don't want to use that term rebuild, but I, I think you're right. I think it's coming a lot sooner, and they're going to have to start figuring some, you know, S H I T out as soon as possible because. I, I think, uh, like you said earlier, too, is, you know, the Ducks had a good chance a couple seasons ago. The last season was kind of eh. And I, I think that's kind of where we're at, is finding an identity and then planning for the future. I, I, I'm really, that's what I'm concerned about, is who will be this new core going forward? Because, like you said, yeah. P- Perry and Kessler may not be there. It may not be there, you know, however soon we want to say. And, and if you still have Getzloff, but how long? So I think you're right. I mean, you have Henrique in there now. With his extension, Great. yeah. So you have him in there. You have Raquel in there for a little while. But, I mean, who else are you going to build on? That's why I kind of hinted at the you know, the young guys. I think the Troy Terrys and the Sam Steeles and the Max Jones and the Larsons are going to be the guys that are going to have to come up and maybe play a little bit this season and then even more so next season. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. You know, giving them some quality NHL time. Because I don't think this is going to be their season for them to come up. But I think they definitely got to, you know, get their toe in the water and, get them used to, you know, playing some NHL minutes because they're going to have to show up in a few seasons and be the guys. But at the same time, you can't rely on all those young guys to make you a brand new team. So you, you've got to make some trades at some point down the line and just, you know, start getting, you know, a bigger piece here or there and just, you know, really looking at what can be done. Because you don't want – what you don't want to happen – is for them to bank on a cup within the next, what, three years that these guys are on contract, and then you're just left with scraps. Right. Which, unfortunately, a lot of teams do. But, I mean, if, you know, Vegas has taught us anything, it's that some guy with, what, six goals can show up. (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, maybe there is a point to the whole pressures off thing of not having to really feel like you have to, you know, make the playoffs and then maybe you will, but I don't know. There's, there's gotta be some, something done this season, but definitely next season to start piecing together a new core because I'm not sold on Kessler playing more than this next year with the, from what I've seen, and her and how he's doing with his injury. That's, you know, just such an unfortunate situation that he has to deal with with his family. And, you know, obviously his health comes first. 
but you know, you, it just seems like there's kind of pieces falling apart and you've got to start piecing something back together. You can't just count on, you know, the guys in the pipeline to just create you a whole new team. So there's got to definitely be something done, be something done this season, but definitely, definitely next season. If they want to start being competitive once, you know, Perry's, Perry's done and Kessler's done. Yeah, I agree. What do you think, Eddie? Yeah, I, I, I've said this numerous times. I, I gave you guys the whole analogy. My brother threw me in the, you know, in the pool to learn how to swim. So I'll, I'll throw with another one. When I first learned how to drive, got my license. I couldn't drive with my mom on the freeway because she was too frantic and it stressed me out. So first got my license, I drove from exit to exit, you know, on the freeway, just, you know, a little half mile, mile, just to start learning it and built from there. I think uh, throwing these young players and giving them a chance to see what they, they can do is great. You I mean, don't be like Edmonton and, and throw mm-hmm. your uh, Sam Steele in there and be like, hey, you're the franchise player. You have to, you know, turn this franchise around. No, yeah. don't put that kind of pressure. But just go ahead and just ease them into it. See what they can do. Give them a few games. Like, let them get that taste. Let them get that, that fire in it. And let, yeah. let them want more. And, and go from there. I mean, we, we can't, you know, we, we can't expect Sam Steele or Troy Terry to come in and be franchise players just like that and rush mm-hmm. them. No. It's just, you know, baby steps. I mean, we have a core that's not going to be around for the next, you know, five, six years. I mean, they're, they're all going to get older unless they're, you know, vampires. I mean, they're <laughs> going to age. So we have to see what we got right now. And if it doesn't work with our system, then we can move forward and we can, you know, try to trade them or do something to better our team. And, and uh, you know, and secondly, better them as players, too, because we don't want to waste players and just like, hey, well, mm-hmm. We're just going to throw you in there, and, and boom, you're, you're done. You're in a Swiss League. You're in the KHL when you had more potential than that. Mm-hmm. So it, it's going to be, a, you know, I really hope that our coaching staff and our GM will give these players you know, a few games here and there, not just, you know, you know, call them up and put them in the press box. Yeah. You know, sh- you know let them see what they can do and go from there. I mean, look at Colorado, for example. They, they, they were the youngest team in the league last season. You know, they had their their top their top two, top four, uh, Sam Gerard, uh, 19 years old, doing spin moves and, and moving the puck really well as a defenseman. So you never know what you have until you try them. And, I mean, I hope Kessler comes back. And I even was uh, writing this down right now as you guys are talking. I mean, with Getzloff on the first line, putting uh, Henrique on the second line, why not just put Kessler on the third line? He could be that shut down third line like Sammy Paulson was, like I said before in the show. I mean, I mean, we have three top center or top, you know, top players right there in those center positions, and we can have Kessler and Perry move down to those bottom six roles and create that much, you know, firepower and and, and be that danger for our bottom six and have everything kind of equal out with the players that we have right now. I mean, that that is a good idea. I mean, you could go with Kessler and Perry on the third line with, uh, you know, maybe Richie or whoever else, and then you have Casse and Henrique and Silverberg on the on the second line. I mean, you know, that's another option you can play around with um another thing that some people had brought up about you know the next couple seasons and the gibson contract and everything and kind of kind of the final thought or if we keep going we go we do but uh how how many how many stanley cups is it going to take in the next couple years to make this gibson contract you know uh worth it hannah do you think if the ducks win one cup in the next couple years it'll be worth it do you think they need to win a bunch or, you know, they win none and, and, and we made a big mistake with this whole deal? I mean, or is that unfair to put that pressure on Gibson? I think it's an, I mean, I mean, I think one would be enough. Right. Considering, like, you know, yes, he does have a lot of height. As soon as he wins a cup, he met the height. You know? Right. That's what so, I think. Like, it's just going to take one. But I think if he doesn't, he needs to at least make a Stanley Cup final appearance in the next couple of years. If he's going to be, you know, worth that contract in four years, five years. Like, you need to, because, like, what, what are you paying him for then? Because, like, the top goaltenders in the league, like, the best American goaltender, I don't think is John Gibson. And I'm pretty sure his cap hit is higher than John Quick right now with that contract. What do you think, Eddie, uh, as far as making the playoffs and Stanley Cups and all that to make Gibson's contract make sense? 
I think it would be uh, she was right, like unfair to put all that pressure on one player. Because hockey is a team sport, and you know, every every player on that ring, including the coaches too, making like decisions, they have to put in something to actually you know produce things. Um, one would be cool, but you know, I'm gonna confess, you know, I I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, so I, I I'm greedy. That's my sin. So <laughs> I would like to be satisfied. We can have a uh, you know. We can finally get tired of hearing the two cup thing from LA, and we can just have three <laughs> cups in a you know, in that term. We if we have three cups from that eight year term, then perfect. That that's that's an understeer. That, that's man, we got three or two cups, you know, for what six point something million. Perfect. One would be cool. And I'd be happy with one. And like I said, I'd go back and admit how wrong I was and whatever. But I'm saying uh, two would make me happy satisfied my greed yeah because then we then we could go oh we can add add three and you guys got two you know we can do that since we always get the oh we got two you got one that oh no we're you know like hey you know what yeah you know what no problem i have a, i have two uh two rings in my ears and one in my mouth <laughs> That's my my call for this coming season. I just I don't I don't have the faith in the core that I guess most fans would. Um, and I think it's it's just really this year I think is really just starting the rebuild retool and kind of get your bearings to you know see the future of the franchise. Is. So I don't I I think they very well can make the playoffs. I think that honestly they'll be depending on Gibson a lot if that's the case, but <laughs> I I don't see it happening where you know they ride Gibson overworking at the tail end of the season because let's face it the past what two three seasons the Ducks are just not good in the beginning of the season and right. they get it together and you know then Gibson's playing like game after game after game. Yep get blocking what 40 shots and it's like okay now he's tired now you're going to playoffs now you lose the first round like cool same story so i think that's if if they're going to make playoffs i think it's going to be that kind of story again it's going to be the same narrative what do you think eddie i think they'll make the playoffs um yeah like i said i i'm really optimistic about stanley cup but just uh as a hockey fan I'm going to say they'll make the playoffs. They're not going to be a top seed in the playoffs, maybe even a wild card spot. But if they don't do something significantly to change what they have right now, I don't see them going that far. Maybe past the first round because, you know, they might be fired up from last season. But if they have a team like, you know, San Jose or Nashville that's been doing things to get better to face them, or even Winnipeg, it's a really dangerous team. Mm -hmm. um, it's really hard to see them skate and last with those kind of players those, those kind of teams you know that are faster and stronger especially winnipeg because winnipeg is they're big and they're strong they can hit they can move um and then their confidence in their team like they see their management actually making their team better and ours is just kind of trying to shop in the 99 cent store which isn't bad <laughs> <laughs> but as as a professional hockey team it, it's not really that good yeah um, unless something significantly changes, or if Gibson really hits that elite level, and players like you know, you know, R R R Raquel hits that level, I, I can't see us going past the second round if we, you know, not second round. Like I said, I really think we'll make the playoffs, but I mean, we, there's, we have to stop and think like, I mean, like, why make the playoffs if we're just gonna like lose the first second round? Like we have to do something different, and I really hope, and I, I, I say I hope because. You can't t teach a dog new tricks. I don't think Bob Murray's going to do anything different. So, um, yeah, so my thing is we'll make the playoffs, but I don't think we're going to make it past the first second round. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of along the same lines as both of you guys. For me, the biggest question mark is how they're going to start the season because like Hannah talked about, the last couple seasons, we, we all know October, November, 
You know, even the beginning of December, they just don't play that well. And then for some reason around the holidays, I, I don't know what it is. They get their Christmas mojo or something. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> something happens around Christmas and the New Year, and they friggin' turn it on. But I, I think a lot of the fans are tired of that. I mean, I know I'm tired of it. I, I, I can't stand when they start out playing, you know. I mean, yeah, they had a lot of injuries last year, too, obviously. We, we talked about that on some of the shows, too. It was it was crazy. It was crazy. I mean, last season was a complete anomaly. I, like, I can't remember. I looked it up, but it was like the most injuries and game man lost. I think in the first three four months. I mean, you, I mean, it was like it was stupid. So you know, of course, you know, ease in Kessler. We don't know 100. percent But I mean, if they can at least start out and have a decent first couple months, I, I still think they make the playoffs. But I'm with you guys. I don't know if they go deep because. Uh, kind of like what you were saying, Eddie, you got Murray and you also got Carlisle, you know, old dogs, new tricks. I, you know, I, I don't know. You know, I, I, I think something has to happen in the middle of the season, whether it's a, a trade or somebody comes up from the, the minors and just goes nuts. Um, that's where I see it. You know, and I'm hopeful like you, Eddie. I, I think that they're going to have a decent season, but I also feel like what you're talking about, Hannah, that we're kind of got to look towards the future and fixing the core coming up. So, it's definitely going to be an interesting season. Um, you know, the Ducks did release the uh, the new jersey. We are giving it away, so make sure you check, you know, all the social media stuff for that. Um, also, make sure you follow the podcast. Uh, go to podomatic.com slash Ducks and Pucks. Uh, we're giving away stuff on there. If you're a follower, we gave away a $50 cool hockey gift card. So look for that. So uh, thank both of you for coming on. I had a lot of fun. Uh, I think you guys did too. And, um, you know, as I always say, let's go Ducks.